Hello everybody and welcome back to the Super Metroid Random LP with me, X-Ray. We're picking up back at our ship this time. And we're going to descend down into the deep, dark depths of Turian, the game's final area. Where we will face off with Mother Brain in a final confrontation to determine the fate not only of Zebes, but perhaps of the very universe. Indeed, because Mother Brain is, is bad news, everybody. She is very bad news, in fact, uh, because she is the leader of the Space Pirates, essentially. And the Space Pirates, well, their ultimate goal in the entire universe is to be the most supreme, uh, undisputed rulers of the known galaxy. And they are extremely amoral and will do essentially anything to achieve that goal, often through very nefarious means. So they're no good, guys. They're no good. They're bad news. And we will gladly tear through them, as we are now. With missiles, even. So, destroying Mother Brain should, in theory, cripple the Space Pirates. Cripple their operations here on Zebes. Zebes, uh, the planet that we're on, being one of the main uh, sort of staging areas for the, for the High Command, which is the name of the organization which runs the Space Pirates. And we, here we are seeing the the statues of all the bosses that we've defeated, unlocking our way into Torian, down below in the water here. Although Torian's not actually in the water, it's not a water level or anything, even though it, it would appear to be completely submersed in water. It is in fact actually sort of a lava zone, although we're rarely ever exposed to lava, except at the very end. I remember being here the first time as a kid. I remember I kept repeatedly visiting this room every time I would beat a boss, even though I knew very well that I needed to defeat all the bosses to unlock whatever special cool thing was below. There was just something mystical about coming back after each boss and unlocking the next stage of my anticipation and excitement. And then when you finally descend down into Torian, as we are now, you're met only with this quaint uneasiness. It's really not quite what you expect. It's all technological and it's not well, altogether very strange and uninviting. There's a save point here. Not really sure why I went into that room, everybody. I knew there was a save point room. It's on the map and there's no re uh, reason for us to go there. Moving on. <laughs> Awkward silence. So here's a Metroid. The Metroids. Oh, and we thought they had all been defeated, but no, they, they are not defeated, in fact. In fact, they are quite alive and well. Metroids, of course, requiring us to freeze them with our ice beam and then shoot either five missiles or one super missile into them to destroy them. Indeed, the, the Metroids, the most dangerous of all creatures, a parasitic organism that feeds on the life energy of its host. Killing them, draining them. Which is why Samus hunts them, because they are so dangerous. And here we have one latched onto us. Now, you'll notice the power bombs do not immediately kill the Metroid, and regular bombs will shake him off of us. Which will give us a little breathing room so we can finish him off, like so. Um, other Metroid games uh, after this, like the, in the Prime series, power bombs will kill them instantly if they're latched onto you, which is useful. And another interesting thing to note, too, is uh, Metroids are not killed by our normal weapons like this, like missiles. It does nothing. It simply makes them irritable. We must freeze them to kill them. There's quite a few of them down here, which is a little puzzling, because last Samus knew, all the Metroids were destroyed, so where did all of these come from? Well, obviously the baby Metroid must have something to do with it. Is the baby Metroid spawning them, perhaps? Or baby Metroids are asexual? I don't know. Although I suppose the uh, the Space Pirates have a very advanced genetics program, so I suppose they might have taken the DNA from the infant Metroid and used it to to genetically engineer some, uh, some of these Metroids. As interesting as this all is to think about, we have no choice now but to simply hunt them. These enemies here are extremely aggravating. They can only be killed with super missiles, and they take quite a few super missiles to kill. It's best to just ignore them. There's no real need to fight them. 
Here's Chozo. Well, Chozo statue. However, when we touch it, it turns to dust. Unsettling. What could be shriveling up and destroying all of these creatures? Perhaps a Metroid? And then suddenly, the screen advances no further, and we see another one of those obnoxious creatures. Oh, our missiles do no damage. What is this? <gasps> it's the baby Metroid. Oh, no. And look at how short of work it makes of that creature. This does not bode well for us. It's coming. Oh, no. Oh, no, everybody. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts so bad. Oh. The motherly bond between us and the Metroid is apparently broken. But just as all seems hopeless, the baby Metroid stops and leaves us alone. Hmm. I'm not sure why I'm narrating this as though anyone who's watching this has never played the game before. I'm sure you're all quite familiar with this, uh, this game and the events that transpire here. Nevertheless, uh, back when this game first came out, I believe in uh, uh, 94, so long ago. Oh yes, 94, the great, the great uh, video game era of 94. True, true story though. It was a truly great era of ga uh, video gaming. But back then, when I when I got to that scene, I was just completely mortified because I. I was all, I was really into the story, everybody. I was like, oh, we're going to save the baby Metroid. That's what we're here to do. Finally, we're going to go save the baby Metroid. And then this big giant Metroid comes out of nowhere, ostensibly the baby, and proceeds to absolutely destroy you. And you're just thinking at that point, like, oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? What did I do wrong? And then, and then it floats away, which is very odd indeed. This game manages to generate uh, manages to generate an awfully intense and unsettling atmosphere, in spite of the fact that that it's uh, the limitations of the era, you know, with the graphics and, and the sound, as good as they were. These uh, walls here that we're destroying with missiles are called zebatates. Now, as I recall, these zebatites are actually a, some sort of nourishment for Mother Brain. Uh, some sort of food. So, there you go, guys. We're destroying Mother Brain's food source. And right here, we got to be really careful with our remaining missile supply. We are quite limited on our regular missiles, and I would like to save my super missiles for actually fighting Mother Brain. Three shot could count here. Although, if, if, if it really came down to the wire, we, we could attack these donut-shaped rinkas and regenerate some of our ammunition count. And before long, after a sustained, relentless barrage of missile strikes, we should be bringing her to her very knees, if she had any. There we go. So, when you reach this point in the game, you're thinking, that's it? <laughs> I went through all those epic adventures, and this is it? This is, this is the extent of the threat of Mother Brain? The creature that tormented me in the first game and then she rises from the ashes as if a phoenix comes back to life and proceeds to kick our ass well not really not yet i should say she has this ring beam attack here which is quite damaging but easy to dodge she throws this grenade on the ground that we just saw also pretty easy to dodge However, the most dangerous aspect of Mother Brain is when she charges up her giant hyper laser. Any moment now, Mother Brain, you know, we, we could get this show on the road in any time, any time you're ready. And I... not that. That is not the hyper laser. That is just a giant fuck you laser <laughs> instead. Now, I've heard very polarized arguments about this, this boss fight because... It's, it's a very scripted boss fight, and it's actually quite difficult to lose this boss fight. So in that sense, it's not challenging. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, fuck you. Ugh. And she pins us against the wall with her giant hyper beam of death. There's really nothing you can do about it. Literally. It just deals massive amounts of damage and is undodgeable. And again, when, you, when you're playing this for the first time, it's an experience, right? 
The game is an experience, and at this point you feel so helpless. What can you possibly do against that kind of power? And she just keeps doing it over and over and over again, and you're thinking to yourself, there's, there's got to be something to this. I mean, every other boss fight in any other game, there's, there's some weak point I have to exploit, or there's some, some way I have to dodge this attack, and I'm just not figuring it out yet. But no, it's not that. It's just that it's scripted, and you're supposed to lose, essentially. We have so many energy tanks, though you might recall, guys. Uh, the game does track all the energy tanks above the maximum that we had. And finally, we can no longer get back up, even though we have energy reserves left. Samus is just too weak. The hyper laser beams were too much for her. And I felt so helpless at this point, guys, when I played the game originally. And then, the baby Metroid comes to save you. And at this point, I think I felt bewildered the first time I played the game. I just wasn't sure what was going on. I wasn't entirely sure that this was the baby Metroid. I mean, it's, it's not a baby, obviously. It's quite large. It obviously grew very large in a short period of time. So it was all very bewildering. What is, what is going on here? And when the first time this happened, I thought the baby Metroid was coming to finish us off. But then I noticed it was refilling our energy, and that is, of course, when it dawns on you. This is the baby Metroid. It has grown up, and it recognizes you again as its mother, as it did when it first saw you, way back on SR388. And it is here where you have that emotional connection to the Metroid again, and seeing Mother Brain relentlessly attacking it like this, again gives you that, that sense of helplessness. It's, it's actually quite touching, it's quite moving, if I'm quite honest. The baby Metroid dies. As a kid, this moment evoked a reaction of such anger from me. And as Samus begins to pulse with righteous fury, I felt as though she had become a conduit for my rage. And as we now bring ruin upon Mother Brain, uh, our shots tearing into her so relentlessly, we return back all the pain that she has caused us tenfold. But sadly, our vengeance and our catharsis within the game, it ends all too soon. And ultimately, we have to be satisfied with watching her cold, lifeless body hit the floor. Goodbye, Mother Brain. So as we can see, while it is somewhat of a scripted fight, it's no less satisfying to destroy Mother Brain once and for all. But of course, as always in Metroid, we can't rest on our laurels. So here we go, we have three minutes to escape the planet, everybody. Three minutes to escape. And Mother, Bo uh, Mother Brain very carefully crafted the, uh, the escape uh, tunnels here to, to make sure that no one could es actually escape, which is very strange. The gates come down and close, trying to prevent anybody from, from escaping. But normally when you have an escape hatch, you design it in such a way that you can use it to escape. So it seems a little odd to uh, bar your own escape there. Here we go, we're, we're climbing up these, these treacherous paths. Every jump at this point in the game feels so treacherous because this is the culmination of all your efforts for the last several hours. You know, your palms are sweating as they do when you're, you're experiencing something so intense. This, again, that nostalgia coming back as we have to ascend the original elevator room from the first game, in addition to everything that we just went through. This is by no means the fastest way that you can escape, the way that I'm currently doing it. But we're taking our time, because uh, the time limit is quite forgiving. It's worth noting that the, the bomb that Mother Brain set in the original game did not destroy the planet. It uh, only caused a massive explosion that collapsed some of the tunnels that Samus originally explored in the first game. However, this bomb 
well, has a little more potency to it. So let's get out of here, Samus. The planet groans in agony. Simply mind-blowing. To think they had a device capable of destroying an entire planet, and the willful malice to use it, destroying all the flora, fauna, and the Chozo artifacts, just for petty revenge against Samus. But Samus is not so easily defeated. Completed in 3 hours and 33 minutes. It's a very curious amount of time for us to take. So, that is that, everybody. We have finally completed the game. It's been quite an adventure. Definitely had a lot of fun with this one, uh, even through some of the harder parts. <laughs> suitless Norfair, Suitless Meridia, I'm looking at you. Oh, and I do have a little surprise for you guys at the end of the video, so <laughs> stick around for that one. I gotta say, it's always fun going back and playing Super Metroid again, though the randomizer definitely makes it a little bit more exciting to be sure. Um, as you've seen, there's all kinds of surprises that await you. And as it is actually a program, you can actually generate a new random seed of the game anytime you like. Sometimes it'll be really difficult, sometimes it'll be really easy. It's completely random. If any of you guys are interested, all you have to do is Google uh, Super Metroid Randomizer, and it will be right there towards the top of your search engine if you care to play it. And I'd recommend that you do. It certainly makes the game a lot of fun to go through uh, another time if you haven't played it in a while. And if any of you guys do download it, give me a shout and let me know how it goes for you, and let me know what sorts of crazy, wacky adventures you managed to get yourself into. I myself definitely learned quite a lot uh, after doing this Let's Play, so it's been an awesome experience for me. And I'm certainly grateful for everybody that made it this far. Thank you so much for watching this Let's Play. So we're just going to wait a moment here for the ending credits to, to finish rolling, and then we will say one last final goodbye to Samus. And we will see our item collection rate uh, for the entire game. And of course, we will see that special little surprise that I have for you. So we'll get to that in just a moment. I did consider skipping through the credits and sort of editing them out to the end, but I decided to go ahead and leave them in. In the end, it felt like that we should honor the amazing talent that went into making this game, these master gamesmiths from Japan, who brought, uh, brought us such a fantastic game and uh, continue to do so to this day. So here we go. Samus, revealing underneath the suit of powered armor, as we learned, 1994 Nintendo was 94, there she is, she's got sort of like a pilot's helmet on there with a visor, shoots us, god what a, what a backstabber, god Samus after all we've been through, why? So let's see what our item collection is, I'm curious to know. 75%, not bad, considering that we didn't really go out of our way to collect everything. See you next mission. Indeed. See you next mission, Samus. And see you next mission, YouTube. I hope you'll join me for the next Let's Play. Thank you again. Hmm... Suitless Meridia? Should I? Yeah.